I mean New Zealand, on a mission to unlock one of the world's best kept food secrets. Maori cuisine. I feel like I'm the end of the earth because the next stop is Antarctica. What I know about the food of this isolated country could be written on a grain of rice. So I'm starting on the remote and wild Stewart Island, known by the Maori as Reki Ora. I'm here to meet Monique Friso. Now she's a super talented up and coming Kiwi chef and she's really blazing a trail, putting Maori cuisine firmly on the map. She's somewhere down there in the middle of nowhere. Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you. Mm -hmm. You good? I'm great. What an amazing place. Welcome to New Zealand. Monique Fizo is one of New Zealand's top chefs. Trained in Michelin-style restaurants, but passionate about her Maori heritage. She's on a one-woman mission to blend the food of her ancestors with the world of fine dining. Now, I've never, ever ventured into that Maori cuisine. So what do I need to understand? There's four main ecosystems. There's the oceans and the river. Mm -hmm. That's Tongaroa, god of the sea. And then there's the mountains uh -huh. and the forest. Papa Tuanuku, Earth Mother. Papa what? Papa Tuanuku. OK, Papa Tuanuku. Papa Tuanuku. <laughs> Papa Tuanuku. That's the one. It's a complex cuisine. There's a lot of customs involved. It's not just about you know, growing food and just making it. There's right. a lot of, like, different traditions that are interwoven in all of the food. The Maori first arrived in New Zealand on pioneering voyages from Polynesia in the 13th century. Although they brought some crops with them, much of their diet relied on hunting and gathering from the forest and ocean. A tradition which Maori chefs like Monique are keeping alive through their cooking. Now, foraging, is it big on the menu here? It is big on the menu here. A lot of the time, it's the only way to get your hands on these ingredients. Wow. And as you can see, I've got two machetes, one of which is for you. That's my machete? That's your machete. <laughs> Ask all the chefs at my I, restaurant. We I, all own a machete each. I know, but you don't walk <laughs> home at night with this thing, do you? No, you would tuck it in our backpack. You tuck it in your backpack. <laughs> These machetes are lethal. Monique is a woman I'm definitely not going to argue with, especially when she's on the hunt for wild food. So this is not like walking down a uh, supermarket aisle. No, this is uh, more of the hard work we do to get the food we need to eat. They're everywhere. Monique, really? Yeah. Seriously? Keep going, chef. But these vines yeah. are more than just a jungle gym. At their tip is a secret Maori delicacy. So these are the young shoots that come off the vines, and they're super tender. Wow. You can eat that? You can eat that. They're hard to find. It's like bush asparagus. Give it a try. They're really good. They are good. Mm. They are like asparagus. Mm. So soft and delicate. Yeah. Delicious. All I can see in this tangled forest are potential personal injury claims. Oh, here's a good one. But for Machete Monique, it's like an all-you-can-eat buffet. What's that? Hotapito. Hotapito. Yeah, it's a native bush pepper tree. Wow. It's super spicy, super peppery. Have a munch on that. Wow. Boy, that one's spicy. Ooh. That is spicy. That's incredible from mm. that. Quite numb now, my tongue. Yeah. From hot. And it's going to stay that way for is a it? while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off the coast of New Zealand's Stewart Island, diving for power and much sought after shellfish. With no sharks in sight, my guide Zane shows me how it's done. Looks easy enough, now it's my turn. Here we go. Power 
cling to the rocks on the seabed. But there's so much kelp down here, I can't find them. And after just a few seconds, I'm gasping for air. That's a lot harder than it looks. Controlling the breathing. Yeah. Oh, back. If it was easy, everybody would do it. There's a little surge there as well, so you get pushed around a lot as well. Yeah, we're going to see it here, yeah. Power are a protected species that can only be harvested by free divers. Amateurs like me have a daily limit of 10. That's hard. <laughs> wow. It was easy, everybody was doing it. But at this rate, I'll be lucky to get one. I've got to do a few just down here. Ready? Yeah. To the right? Yeah, just, just over here. OK. Nice one. At last, I can see my bounty, but prizing them off the rocks is a lot tougher than Zane made it look. No! <laughs> you can't touch them first. Uh, you touch the first, they'll stick on really tight. In Maori legend, power were compared to mighty warriors, able to overcome their opponents with stubborn strength. But surely, I'm not going to be out-muscled by a six-inch shellfish. Bloody hell. Yeah. I'm holding it by hat and trying to put it off. Yeah, don't do that. Don't touch them before you try and get them off. You just try and get your trail up, take them and give them a flick. Damn. Monique sent me here to gather a key ingredient for our final feast. Somehow, I think failure isn't an option. Oh, that's a beauty. Great, you got one out of your ten. You're not a native, you got nine more to go. <laughs> Woo! Well done, two wax. Wow. That's so beautiful. Woo! Just a few more, and I'll have enough for our feast. The question is, are they as tasty as Monique and Zane say they are? We're having a fish fry on the beach, and that means I get to use the F word. Fluff. Hey, um. When did you catch those buggers? Just what you use for having your dog. Serious? Yeah, no, it was... Blue cod. Amazing. So how are you going to cook these things? We're going to try to longer than kelp. In like, kelp? Like we did when we were kids. Yeah. Is this the same kelp that we were diving, diving in? Diving yeah, yeah. Wow. Old Mary Methody originally, and they cooked lots of stuff in the kelp. And so you literally make this little pocket, make right? Pocket. And we're going to put the fish, and then we're going to put it inside another bag. What a great idea. So that will burn, that will steam. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Don't go all the way now. I've heard of boiling a bag, but boiling a kelp is a new one on me. How cool is that? No seasoning, because obviously the kelp will give it the saltiness, right? Yeah. Look at that. It's like a little satchel, huh? It's like a little bum bag. Who needs an oven when you've got this out here? Can't wait to taste that. It won't take very long at all. There's just enough time to prepare the power. So how do you get these out? So you put your thumb in, try and get it hard against the shell. Right. Nice. And when you feel that hard muscle in front of you, just keep pushing and try and get underneath it, and it'll pop. Man, yeah. that's how you get them out? Yeah, that's it. Pops. Wow. It's incredible how firm they are. Some chefs would gently tenderise this delicacy. But that's not how they do it here. So we wrap them up in a cloth and give them a smack with a rock. Really? That's it. Yep. This give is them. how we tenderise them? Yep. So we're literally just going to fry these now. What would you normally do? I like them for breakfast, fried whole, fried with a couple whole. of eggs and a bit of steak sauce. <laughs> <laughs> what a delicacy. Straight in. Yeah, I reckon. Now that is incredible. It's like stunning ribeyes from the sea. Huh? Yeah. They are beautiful. Traditionally, power was served to high-ranking Maori guests. I'm pretty sure none of them were called fluff, but there's a first time for everything. 
flap. Now you're getting a little one. Oh, yeah. You didn't dive. <laughs> yeah. I'm dying to taste these. Huh? Cheers, guys. My God. They are delicious. It's amazing how tender they are now. They're very tender and very huh? nice. Got to be tender because they haven't got any top taste. So. <laughs> <laughs> now for Fluff's kelp cooked blue cod. Wow. Fluff. <laughs> I love you. That is steamed to perfection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that a fluke or are you the real deal? I said, oh, we're the real deal. You're the real deal? <laughs> yeah. What an extraordinary day. I've understood how precious the water is, what they get from the sea and how they live. Now I've got to put all this together and somehow cook a meal of a lifetime because there's no excuse, because so far the ingredients have been second to none. Gathering those power by hand has given me a fascinating insight into how little ocean foraging has changed since the days of Zane's ancestors and I'm hoping I'm now one step closer to earning a place at Monique's side for a final feast. Gents, what a treat. Thank you. I promise next time I'll stay down there longer. Yeah? <laughs> Don't give up your day job. <laughs> I'd be skinned, right? You'd be very, very poor. Now, Monique's arranged me to meet this incredible eel fisherman. She said you'll recognise him when you spot him. Good to see you, Kia ora. Good to see you. Good to see you, brother. I'm, I'm going to give you a traditional Māori uh, greeting. This right. is called a hongi. Hongi? Hongi. Hongi, excuse me. Nothing horny about no. me, son. <laughs> <laughs> the touching of, of the noses allows us to share a sacred friend. Amazing. Come on the boat, mate. We're Thanks, going bud. for a ride. Thank you, bud. Invented by a thrill-seeking Kiwi. The speed is insane. Jet boats can hit 50 miles an hour and are purpose-built for New Zealand's fast-flowing shallow rivers. The only way to travel when you're doing the traditional Māori fishing. Oh, God. They can also do this. Twenty-five miles upriver, we've reached Jeremy's secret eel fishing location. And this is where we get off. We get off here. Yeah. Eels are one of the most highly valued foods in Maori cuisine. You ready, brother? Let's go, Captain. So this is your favourite pool. This is the pool. Yep. Once you start chasing them, yep. they're going to want to come and try their best to look like a log, really? or just get well away from you, boy tucking in under the bank here, so you're going to have to fish around for it. Rope so around. Wait, there's no line, there's no rod, there's no bait. So the idea is what? You're going to use your hands, these slippery wee suckers. Stop it. Do they have teeth? Do they bite? They have teeth. They bite. Big fella like you, you'll be all right, though. That's cold. Was that something there? No. No, I just saw a bit of murky water suggest that something made that above us. Just here. Just here. Stop it. Can you see this? Quietly, quietly, quietly. Oh, That's a tree. No, <laughs> this is a hill. Don't let him get away. Both hands under his belly, and you're going to flick him up to me. You can do it. Both hands. Both hands at once. He's gone back under now. Where's he gone? Yes, I can see him. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm knee deep in the remote backwaters of New Zealand's Matukutuki Valley. Oh, damn! He's gone back under now. Attempting to catch freshwater eels. Gordon, we've got another one just beside you. 
is a little bit bigger than the one we've just seen. That's not a eel, that's a tree trunk. No, this is a eel beside the tree trunk. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> now I can see him. Can, what if I use that stick yep. so that I don't get bitten and you catch him with your bare hands? <laughs> <laughs> All right, no mucking around on this one, Gordon. You're going to lift it and throw it. Right. Oh, oh you yeah, keep going, keep going. Just bring him out. Bring him out. Yes, boy! Get him! Oh, damn! They're so slippery. Right, where's he gone now? Don't move. I can see his spine in there. You, you've got to make sure that you can get him in such a way that you're supporting his weight. Yes. Because he's a big boy. Get your hands under there, sort of tickle him, have him relax. You've got him now, right? Totally committed to that. I was <laughs> born ready. Let's go. Third time, Lucky. Come on. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yes! Good boy! Got him. Well, that is not small. Gordon, you've done bloody well. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. My God. He's beautiful. I reckon he's a good 6 kg. That's insane. You know, he could survive out of water for days. Serious? If he had to. They make great pets. <laughs> you know, you can feed them in the... <laughs> I'm just amazed. I'm amazed at the size of them. I'm amazed you kissed it. The Maori have been catching eels for hundreds of years. So put him back? Yeah, put him back. But according to tradition, you only take what you need. And since Jeremy has already an eel to eat, we're letting this beauty go. You didn't tell me the size of a freaking <laughs> anaconda. That was awesome, mate, oh. bro. <laughs> it turns out he's not just an expert fisherman. He's also pretty handy with a homemade smoker. That looks beautiful. It's lightly smoked, right? It's lightly smoked. Look how moist it is. Wow. That's delicious. It's so sweet. Thank you, brother. There's something so important from a chef's point of view to get that close with a sauce. How important is the food with American Egg for you now? It's all about the puku, we say. The puku. The puku, the stomach, eh? Uh-huh. That's a source of emotions and feelings, comes from the guts. Yeah. And families used to fight to protect the eels. Right. It was that important that wow. we preserved not only the food, but the environment. Because with the seal comes the environment as well, and we're really proud of that. Those delicacies that I've discovered from foraging the forest to diving, and now with that eel on top of that, it's almost like it's one of the best kept secrets in the culinary world, Mary cuisine. They have so much real close-knit connect with ingredients. It's spiritual. And now I've got a pedigree of Maori insights, and I'm desperate now to have a go. Thank you. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora.